So I got a question from a viewer of one of my videos. It's the video on forced air exchange heaters. Let me read it out to you guys. This is from Jacob Allen. He says, hey there, I was just watching your video the other day about the forced exchange heaters. It seemed to be a difficult topic for research and your video was very informative. So I appreciate your content. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm currently a student in Prince Edward Island, Canada, but my plans are to build a van of my own after school so that I can travel for a while and try to do some, uh, check out some larger cities without living in debt. I'm a huge car enthusiast as well, so I think uh, I'll enjoy this lifestyle. So, like I mentioned, I've been researching heating methods for Canadian winter. Here in the Maritimes, it can get as cold as negative 30 degrees Celsius. Woo! That's cold. I'm aware that I will need to insulate more than most builds I've seen. I need to seal every door and opening, as well as I'll need to install a proper vapor barrier within the walls. I'm greatly considering the same Propex heater that you were considering yourself, or maybe the Dickinson stove burner. I have just a few pressing questions, though, uh, in relation to other methods. Would it be possible to hook up the Propex, Lobusto, or the, any other heater right to the vehicle gasoline tank? Can a gasoline or propane unit function without needing any ventilation at all? Or does the unit do a complete ventilation of its own? In proper functioning order, does it emit CO2 at all? Lastly, could I have any of these methods on running unattended, such as maybe on a timer while I'm sleeping? With the question, I'm referring to all the brands, including the Dickinson stove. I apologize for this lengthy message, just wanted to be very precise. You may be the only person that can find the information for me. So again, your intelligence and insight to the matter is I greatly appreciated. Uh, which method do you think would work best for me? I'm keen on hearing your response. Best wishes, my friend. Cheers. So I'm not an expert on the subject, but I'll do my best to answer for you. So I know it was a pretty long question, but you were right in your thinking all along. It can do all those things. So it, like in no order here, uh, yes, a heat exchanger, uh, it uses its own intake and exhaust that's separate from your cabin air. So there are no combustion gases uh, that are transferred into your space. So you're good there. Uh, and as far as the Propex, Webesto, um, or the SPAR heaters, um, they all use a thermostat. So yeah, you can keep that on at night while you're sleeping. There's no danger to you. And the S-Bar Webesto heaters, uh, they can draw from the, f the main fuel tank. So you could, with a conversion kit, hook it right into your gas tank. And if it's a diesel, they'll need a small pickup that's installed before the gas line. And with insulation, more is always better in colder temperatures. But I find that, and a lot of van dwellers can agree with this, when you're in warmer temperatures and the sun finally does go down, it takes longer for your cabin air to cool down. So with less insulation, it cools down faster, meaning, you know, it'll be not as hot when you're sleeping at night. And you're definitely right about the Mr. Buddy heaters. They emit a lot of not only CO2, but the big problem is moisture in the air. And it's funny because the coincidence here is just, uh, in, I think Mike of Living Free's last video that he uploaded, he talks just about that topic right there. I've got a buddy heater. Somebody, somebody commented and said, why don't you get a buddy heater? They obviously haven't been watching my videos. You have to see, you have to go back in my videos, the ones where I'm in winter, winter storms and stuff, heading up to Minnesota, and you'll see exactly why I don't use the buddy heater. In fact, I'm thinking about getting rid of it, to be honest. When it gets cold, cold outside, all that thing does, even if you have it ventilated, the moisture accumulates and accumulates, and I was picking ice off of my, my windows and stuff. The buddy heater is cool for something really, really well ventilated and stuff like that outside, but it's not meant for indoors. They even tell you it's not meant for indoors, and it's not. It's good for in the morning for uh, for taking the brisk out of the air. You know, it is what it is, though. And sometimes it is what it isn't. So yeah, while it's cheap to get a Mister Buddy, you're going to deal with problems of moisture when it gets really cold. It's really not going to help you at all. But that's why you pay more for these forced exchange heaters. There's a lot of benefits to them, but the installation is more involved, right? Like I said, my idea, I think it would be really cool to take the uh, exhaust from those, the toxic exhaust from those forced heat exchangers and coil them, snake them into your, uh, through like a PEX pipe or some sort of uh, metal piping. That way, instead of that heat being exhausted of those toxic fumes outside, you can still benefit from some of the heat. And it's much like a rocket stove. So the exhaust can be coiled around and provide thermal transfer to your floor. So it's a heated floor. And along those lines, another method of heating uh, would be, and it's depending on if you can tap into the coolant system of your car, your vehicle, and maybe run that through PEX piping that would go through all of your flooring. 
And while insulation is really important, you need to keep in mind that the environment you're in, you need to get the proper insulation. It's, you're, it's very cold over there, you said negative 30 degrees. Uh, poly ISO is a very popular insulation, about one inch of that is the norm. Uh, but you need to be aware that in very extreme cold temperatures, there is a, uh, one of the compounds in poly iso liquefies. So that could be a problem. You might want to research the proper type of insulation for your environment. Anyway, I think you were right on. Basically, just think of, and a quick way of illustrating the difference between a Mr. Buddy heater. So a Mr. Buddy heater will just combust all the and all the gases are emitted right into the living space well with a forced air exchange heater think of this as a copper pipe and there was air being forced through it through it with a fan and then this is how we would heat the air and all the gases that are burning from this lighter are in a different compartment that get blown outside of the vehicle but the air that's being forced through this let's call it a copper pipe even though it's a pen that air is heated and that blows into the cabin. So there's a separation. You've got the heated air in here going into the cabin and then the poisonous CO2 being uh, pushed outside of the cabin. So I hope, I hope that illustrates the difference between a catalytic heater and a forced uh, exchange heater. All right, man, I hope that answered your questions and thanks again for that $10 donation. Anybody else have questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks a lot.